All right, let's jump into this. So um, we've got a great agenda today. We've got a lot of things we're going to cover. So let's jump into uh, metrics and KPIs. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about creating metrics. Really, really important about uh, learning and creating PMO metrics by PMO types. Um, we'll talk about metric examples. We'll look at metric data. We'll talk about best practices around metric creation. We'll talk about Power BI and some dashboards and reports around metrics. And then we'll summarize and wrap it all up. So, all right, that's what we're going to cover. So I'm excited. Let's jump into this. So what are the correct metrics for my PMO? I absolutely love this question. One of the things is I often get this question quite a bit, right? And so when people come to me, they say, hey, what are my metrics? What do I, you know, what metrics do I create up? I got to get these things created as soon as possible. Well, I've documented a lot of this material in, in chapter 17 of my book. But what I wanted to do is really kind of give you that Reader's Digest version, but enough that you can take away and start really understanding what are the correct metrics to build for your PMO. Let's jump into it. Wait, wait, before I begin, hold on. I got a question for you. How many of you are nailing your metrics in your PMO? Who, how many are just kind of knocking out of the park? How many people have metrics and just know exactly what to do and you're hitting every metric? So let's do this. Let's fire up the chat button. And uh, let me just ask you this question in that chat button. How many, just put PMO metrics in there, right? So that's our audience participation. And so metrics, PMO metrics, if you have them, you're nailing it and you're just knocking it out of the park, put PMO metrics. And I've got chat up. So I see Alicia said not, which is probably means you're not nailing your metrics. None, okay. Starting point, great, okay. PMO metrics, great, not well. Have them not meeting them, yeah. Awesome. Not really, not really. Great. So you guys are in the right spot because we're going to actually walk you through that. And a lot of the topics we cover today will really help you get in there and start building those. So thanks. That was fun. I see a lot of not really. So that's awesome. All right. It's perfect. Okay. So let's do this. I got another question. What's the difference between a KPI and a metric? Right. Again, that, there's a lot of confusion around that. And so let's get into that as well. So when you think about it, right, KPIs are key performance indicators and they're kind of a metric. Right. So in other words, all KPIs are metrics. Right. But not all metrics are KPIs. So KPIs have characteristics. And so they're defined by the management team. They cascade through the organization. They're based on corporate standards. They're easy to comprehend. They empower the users and they lead to positive action. So these are the characteristics that we look for when we create KPIs, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some business metrics. And so there are tons and tons of business metrics. There's no question, right? But what are some of the key ones? What are the, some, the ones that we really should focus on, right? Common metrics include business value, right, which includes sales, revenue, net profit, right, or even cycle times. Customer satisfaction, right, you think about JD Powers, you think about social media sentiment or customer sentiment, right? So what are their customer satisfaction metrics? Governance metrics, right? You think about um, the number of cyber attacks, the number of policy violations, right? Number of issues open per quarter. So there's governance metrics. And then there's organizational change management metrics, right? Including the scope of the change. How many work groups, how many departments, how many employees are impacted by that? What's the type of change? So we could go on and on and on around the business metrics, but when you think about these business metrics, these are some of the things that you need to formulate when you're creating these for your organization, okay? Now, it's key. If you're running a PMO, you don't build these metrics yourself, right? These are not things that you just make up. You need to work with a Six Sigma expert, a business architect. You need to work with what they're doing across the company. You really can't build this yourself. It just doesn't make sense. So I think it's really, really important to understand these are the key metrics, 
right? And then, of course, what we want to do is we want to get experts to work alongside of us to help create these for the organization. That makes sense? So your PMO may track several types of metrics, right? Organizational or in performance metrics, right? Those are easy ones. Those are ones that we tend to, we go to, we lean to right away, right? On time, on budget, right? That type of thing. Quantitative and qualitative metrics, right? So quantitative being that specific number that we're trying to hit, qualitative more of a subjective opinion, and then tangible and intangible metrics. So lots and lots of different types of metrics that you have in your PMO. Okay. All right. So let's get into creating metrics. That's what we all want to do. We want to get to this. I love this quote. I absolutely love this quote. We can't improve what we don't measure. I'm sure you guys have seen that before, but we can't improve what we don't measure. Now think about that quote for a second. If you're trying to improve your PMO, you can't improve your PMO if you don't measure what you're doing in your PMO, right? And metrics are going to allow you to do those measurements. Even the on-budget, on-time, some of those standard metrics that you just absolutely uh, hear all the time, you can't improve them if you're not tracking them. Does that make sense? Because I think that's really important. That's why I love that quote, right? I just think that's so important that we can't improve if we don't measure and we need the data to measure. So one of the key takeaways or one of the things I think it's really, really important is PMO managers really shouldn't rush into creating PMO metrics. We see this all the time, right? We, we have this question, what metrics do I do? What metrics do I set up? And it's like, slow, slow down. You don't want to create these because they can drive bad behavior. What you want to do is you want to unpack a couple different things here, right? Um, and so, and, and we're getting into those now, but and when you rush into creating them, right, it actually leaves and, and it drives people to bad performance. They just want to hit a metric. They will do whatever they can do. We often hear watermelon. We often hear, well, you know, we didn't baseline or what's the, you know, when we do a metrics between baseline and non-baseline, well, we forgot to baseline because of this. My project's different. Right. So we lead to bad behavior if we don't have the maturity, we don't have the structure, and we don't have all the processes set up to be able to drive and hit these metrics. And I 100% agree. We need to have metrics. It's just that it's that process to get to the metrics to then figure out how we get those set up in our organization. Does that make sense? And again, I'm tracking the comments, so um, I won't hit them all, but definitely comment below or watch the, or put it in the chat if that's making sense or you're seeing that we're rushing and your executives may be asking you to rush to create metrics when really you're not set up necessarily to do that just yet and have all that process and rigor in place. Okay? So if you're going to create metrics, and I strongly believe you do, you need to start with the type of PMO you're running, okay? So is it a directive PMO? Is it a supportive? Is it a controlling? Is it an enterprise? The type of PMO is your first starting point in deciding what metrics you need to create for your organization, okay? On time and on budget may not make sense, for example, in a supportive PMO. So here are the top seven PMOs. Okay, those are the ones, directive, supportive, controlling, right? We've seen all these before. So everyone should be familiar with them, right? And should understand that a directive PMO and a supportive PMO will have different metrics. And why is that? They will have different metrics because they have different data, right? So your data is going to drive and be different, but your data is going to drive your metric creation. Data is what creates metrics. So I want to pause for a second, make sure that's clear. Everyone understands different PMOs will have different data and different data will, will drive.